All right, hello everyone. We are going to continue from the control net video generation workflow and connect this to the one 2.1 workflow via a new node that came out recently called Juan Fun Control to Video. This is a native to come for UI node. And if you don't have it, uh, you need to update <laughs> your come for UI. If you're having problems updating your come for UI, I do have a video on Patreon about this very problem that may help you solve that problem. So it's free to, to watch. Have any other issues with it, try to contact me on there maybe. But this is what we're going to use. And we're using this whole thing, we're going to put it in here. The real reason why I separated this into two different videos is because it's a, kind of a big workflow. But again, if you saw the tutorial in this video, which I did previously, then you'll know that this really isn't that hard to build. It just kind of looks kind of crazy, right? All right. Now, first things first, we're going to have to talk about an issue that this thing has. If you don't follow this, you're going to get some wonky results. The idea is this. The start image has to match up with the first pose of the control video. So this control video, this is, is going to be this or something like this. I'm not going to use the depth anything part of this, actually. I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to filter this really quick bypass all of this because I don't want the armor stuff to show through because I'm just going to make like a whole different kind of character as it sees right here. The issue that we're going to have to deal with is that we need the pose, the very first part of this pose to match up with the start image that we're going to use, which is whatever we want to morph it into. We're going to use a different character altogether, right? Only thing we want to record is the motion. So I'm going to do this really quick. We're going to I want to pull out the start image and actually this thing is kind of funky. I don't know if you can see this right now, but I'm going to show you for whatever reason in this particular one, and this might not happen on yours, but on this particular video, the start frame on this one is black. So it didn't pick up the DW pill. So I'm going to use the second frame. This might not be important. I'm pretty sure this is just for my particular video and I don't feel like loading in another one. Because, you know, I want to create continuity between the last tutorial. So I'm going to use the second frame. Extract, image extract from batch. Okay. So this is just going to pull one frame. And I'm going to pull frame. It's going to be one, actually. <laughs> I know it's that's the second frame, not the, the first frame. It's, this, it's like a programming thing. I don't even, I don't even want to. <laughs> it's a computer type thing. Zero is, is the first frame and blah, 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 blah. Some people will know what I'm talking about. Some people may not, but just go with me on that. Okay, that's what that means. So because the first frame is not too different from, I'm pretty sure the first frame of this, I'm pretty sure it's not going to matter that much. So we're going to use this as a guide to create the start image that we're going to use. That's whatever character we want to create, but they have to be in the same starting pose. If you don't, again, you're going to get some wonky results, at least in the beginning. But that's what this, the I guess, the limitations of this one fun control thing. I don't even know that it, the size of it, of it matters. It's just the pose that you use has to match up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this old. Remember this video that I made about this, about the contr utilizing control net? This is the first control net video, right? I'm going to utilize this as a way to make that pose. Okay, so I'm just going to save this image really quick. All right. And and just drag and drop it into this. Now, technically, it's already in DW pose. So I'm going to bypass. Oh, I already have it bypassed on here because <laughs> sometimes I utilize it just like this. So I'm going to bypass this because it's already in the format it needs to be in to be able to use in the control net. It's just an image, right? And the only thing I have to do here is make the image I want. So is that the right dimensions? I think that's the right dimensions. Yeah, the dimensions of this are 720 by 1264. Right, okay. It's, it's all in the same dimensions, in the right dimensions. I'm going to take the guidance down to 2.8. Let's make something realistic. All right, so we're just going to make a new character and 1800s photo of a man wearing a masquerade. Oh my God, do I know how to spell masquerade? <laughs> yes, masquerade, mask, a top hat, and a tuxedo. There is a single cloud in the sky in the background. Okay, let's go with that. 
So, all this is, don't worry about that, Laura. It's a little like Laura I like to use sometimes. It might be cool for this, might not be, I don't know. Just gonna run it, and all we're gonna do is basically create the start image based upon the framework of this image. And while it's running in the background to make this image pop, because it has to load all these different models in here, right? What I'm gonna do is we're gonna build out this workflow. All right, let's go ahead and just get rid of all this excess stuff we don't really need. You get the idea of what we're trying to do. We still need this video because again, this video is going to be the driving video that links into this. The basis of this workflow is not going to change, but I'm just going to go ahead and connect our driving video into the control video, right? And we're going to build out here from here. So similar things that we've done before. There's going to be some new things, but mostly it's going to be the same. As a matter of fact, for the most part, it's going <laughs> to, we're going to make it identical stuff. So case sampler, because everything has to go through the case sampler in the end, right? All right. There, there, link this to the other case sampler. Might be a bit laggy because I'm doing this other stuff in the background. Take this out via e decode. And that one's going to be another video combined. I'm just going to clone this one. All right, there, just like that. So this is gonna be the end result output right here, right? Pull out our model, net loader. I'm using the one 2.13B. I think most people are probably gonna use this one. This is the, the not so heavy one. The 14B, and especially if you, if you don't know, 14B means like 14 billion <laughs> versus this one, which is 1.3 billion. And I'm pretty sure that's like the, amount of like images or something that they built this model on. So that's why it's, it's a sub substantial difference in how much stuff that has to be loaded into this thing. So that's why you would want to just use, <laughs> use the one that can, your system can handle <laughs> and you know, you'll find out right away <laughs> which one that is. Also, I realized too, this actually, when this thing goes through, it actually loads pretty fast. It actually um, doesn't take that long. It's a lot shorter than the image to video one for, at least for me, it seems that way. So boom, we got this negative and positive prompt. Let's color code them so it's easier to recognize which one is which. Green means positive, red means negative, right? All right, we're gonna pull back our VAE, which is here, VAE loader. We want one 2.1 VAE. This model, this one you may not have. I'll, I'll show a, put a link, I think, in the description, I think, for this. I'll show you where to get that from. But this model, you should already have this if you've done one 2.1 already, especially in the image to video one. And here, clip loader. I'm gonna use that same clip loader that we used in the other one 2.1 video. Switch the type to one as well. Right, I think we got the bulk of the stuff that most of us should be familiar with, at least to some degree, I think. So one part here, okay. And it, none of the other stuff is really that complicated, I think. Clip vision output, you can, if you, this is the same nodes we used in the other one 2.1 tutorial that I made, the really, really simple one. <laughs> I, I was amazed at how simple you could make that workflow. And then there's the image, which is going to coincide with the start image. So this, load image we still keep loading up that fate those set of faces because it's like the last thing i put in the input i think was that okay so this is what the image that we're producing in the other window we're going to put that in here that's because this is also going to be the start image as well all right so that's the basic entire workflow that you need to make this run Again, the idea is that it's not as crazy as it seems when you got it all together. And I've seen a workflow of this that's even crazier, and I'm like, why is it so crazy? Why is it so verbose, quote unquote? <laughs> that's probably not the right word for that. But anyways, bring all this over, make it easier to see it all, right? Okay, I explained a lot of what these other nodes do in the previous 1.2.1 image to video tutorial. So if you really want an explanation for that stuff again, 
more thorough of what they're actually doing, um, please go to that video. Because I, I don't know if I should be just saying the same stuff over and over again. Let's go see what the other thing produced. A black image. <laughs> Alright, we run this whole thing. Okay, and just so you guys know, if you don't remember, if you haven't seen the tutorial for this particular workflow, the, the first part is basically like a preliminary type of image that just follows the control net closely. But the second one is supposed to be the more refined version of it. Now, this didn't follow it close enough because I don't want his hands to be in his pockets. So, to make this a little bit better, because I, I don't want him to do that. <laughs> Wearing formal white gloves. I want to make sure that, because most of this video that we're using is movement with the hands. So, them having their hands in their pockets is not probably a good idea. I don't want that. No, that's pretty good. Yeah, I just want the hands to show. Let's just redo it with the hands, because without the hands, I don't think it'll be that great. That's all we're trying to do. We're just trying to make it match up. There we go. They got some hands there. Oh my god, they look ghoulish. I kind of like it, though. <laughs> as much as that looks like kind of like spooky. Let's see what it does in the final result. Maybe, oh, you know what? It's probably the control net because it's so, like, the, the fingertips are so sharp. This is the reason why I do the upscale, too, by the way. Because of stuff like that. In the upscale version, right, it ignores the control net. It just goes straight from, if you look at the way it, it pulls the model and everything, it ignores the control net stuff. And it just focuses on the upscale with just a little bit of the denoise strength, like, pretty low. Hmm. Anyways, we're just going to use it anyways, just because, right? I wanted the gloves, but who cares? <laughs> it doesn't matter that much. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting so bent out of shape about that. Okay, so we have that part. We have the first frame that we needed. Going to drop in this frame into here. All right, now, you know what? And we're going to do it without even putting in the text. No, no text prompt. I'm just going to show you what it looks like without that. Another reason why I don't like larger workflows. It takes so much to get them just to go. And this, just I guess me recording at the same time, you see I'm at like 99%, 100% GPU usage. So yeah, it's still taxing on my machine to do all this stuff. Okay, so we got a little bit of, so there's two things we did wrong. One, we didn't put the image in the right size, but this, I want to just make a point about this though. It goes to show that even if it's not in the right size though, it's still following the control net, right? Even with it not sized correctly. So still relatively good thing and it added color to them. But again, we didn't prompt anything. So it's just going really by the control net and the, the thing that we had. So let's do this. And I'm going to take down the CFG to five, by the way. And I'm going to switch it to ones I like to use. I'm, what I like to use is the DDIM. And I'm gonna go with simple. I'm gonna change those sampler. And I'm gonna do something. That I haven't showed people this trick, but some people don't know that you can do this. So this image resize thing. I know in the last tutorial I said like I don't even know what I'm gonna use this for, but now I see a really good way to use this for this problem right here. You can have this output of width and height that you can feed into it. So without even feeding the image into it, because we already fed it through the control video. So all you have to do is you see where the width is, right? You see where the little boxes for width and height you can actually send it right to that box and it overrides it same thing with the height just like this so we can feed it directly into it boom and now i don't have to if i didn't know the sizing of this i don't you know have to go try to find it like i did with the show any node or whatever i can just feed it right into it and now it should correct let's not crop and that was another thing we did <laughs> and run it again. That's like a really cool trick that you can do. Okay, boom. So we got something that popped out, right? So it does follow the control net. And this is without me putting any text prompt in there to help it out, right? There's nothing in there. Even without text prompt, it's following the control net. In fact, that's the only thing it's really doing. 
and and top hat with straight mask examines his hands. I don't think I've actually even done this workflow <laughs> with a prompt before. I usually just stick with the control net. So I actually am curious as to see what it, how the prompting itself can actually be beneficial to the workflow and control net part. I think the hands are a little bit more deliberate now. And that little blip or whatever that was there before has well left. <laughs> I don't see that little blip that it had before. So I think the prompting yes does help a little bit to make it more refined, which it should. But this is the workflow. This is it. This is what makes it function. You can add other things to make it better, but this is basically how it works. I love just watching how like my VRAM and GPU just totally maxed out just to do this. <laughs> oh my God. I, it's time to upgrade. I guess the, what is it? 3090 is just not enough anymore. But anyways, you see how the thing works. You know, there's always problems with video generation to some degree, but functioning workflow, not as complicated, especially as complicated and convoluted as I've seen some other people's workflows with this, but there's other things you can add to it. Like, you know, if people, if you have Sage attention, you can add that to it too. That will help Tcash. And I will have a more cleaned up version <laughs> of this for you to utilize in your own stuff on Patreon that I'm going to figure out a way to clean this up and make it look nice. <laughs> but I hope this was informative. I hope I explained it well enough. I know a lot of things are taken from other tutorials. So I do advise you to like look at the other tutorials on this YouTube channel to figure those other things out. I feel like I don't want to be making redundant tutorials where it's just like you, I've already explained this before and I'm explaining it again and again and again and again in the different videos, but it's <laughs> not anything new and I'm spending so much time explaining stuff I already explained and not this new stuff. So. I hope this works out. I hope this is not getting too bulky. And again, that's the main reason why I didn't add just to create this one image from the control net of this image. I didn't add in this workflow inside of it because it's just way too much. And it's way too much for several reasons. One, it's way too much because you need all these flux models and everything else loaded in as well as the one 2.1 all this kind of stuff loading you have to keep dumping the vram either way it goes otherwise you're probably just going to overload your system but maybe i should start making tutorials about how to like deal with those things they're more technical though so that's why i don't know if that's i don't know we'll see <laughs> most likely i'll put stuff like that on patreon if people are interested but if they're not i won't even do it there either so again i hope this was informative hey look at that it's only four minutes it only took four minutes to do that well, you know, I hope you guys have a great day.